Recently uncovered government documents show how the largest lumber company in the world has broken the law and violated its commitments in the province of Saskatchewan, Canada. RAN videographers visited Weyerhaeuser's Pasquia Porcupine Forest Management Area spanning a vast 20,000 square kilometers on the threatened southern fringe of Canada's boreal forest, North America's largest intact forest ecosystem. In its 2004 Citizenship and Environmental Report, Weyerhaeuser states that citizenship is a core value for the company. We support communities where we do business, hold ourselves to the highest standards of ethical conduct and environmental responsibility, and communicate openly. In recent interviews, citizens living in communities near Weyerhaeuser's operations had a very different experience. And as a community, this has been record profits for the company, anywhere from 60 to 80 million dollars a year. So you wonder, when is our time to share? When do we get to share in this stuff? All we see is us going down and warehouses going up. When warehouses stepped into the picture, they started eliminating co contractors. And a couple years ago, we were down to 28 contractors, from 48 to 28 in under three years and the long-standing family tradition meant nothing to them. Saskatchewan law requires public input into decisions about logging and road building. Persons potentially affected by forest management decisions shall have an opportunity for a meaningful role in forest management planning. In Saskatchewan, however, Weyerhaeuser routinely failed to inform and accommodate local communities even when logging in popular recreation areas like Ruby Lake near the town of Hudson Bay, Saskatchewan. The entire community of Hudson Bay wasn't notified that they were going to cut right up to the shores of Ruby Lake. What they did is basically pull the wool over the eyes of the residents of Hudson Bay, Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. Because I would estimate that 95% of the residents if they were allowed to have a voice in the town hall, they would get a resounding no, you are not cutting it. In that same environmental report, Weyerhaeuser prides itself on being open and honest. We're committed to conducting business honestly and communicating openly. But our commitment goes farther, to holding ourselves to the highest standards of ethical conduct. Local residents have a very different story to tell. It seems like in Weyerhaeuser, it's almost like words mean nothing. Like they promised us all these jobs, they've all disappeared. They promised McMillan would go five to ten years, it's demolished after 18 months. Like, uh, it seems like a perpetual lie almost. Uh, the forest management agreements that are being uh, pushed in here, uh, with that road that was put in there, there was no consultation with our people. And the ones that do go and cut, I imagine they get paid a little bit of money. But for us to benefit from that, no, they're only taking our resources. New roads into the forest fragment habitat and encroach on ecologically sensitive areas. This destroys the livelihood of local land users and threatens wildlife populations. In order to protect what we have with the wildlife, you cannot put roads into this area because it's so delicate. It's such a, a pristine wilderness area. And uh, we don't want any kind of impact to come into our area. I guess the greatest impact that can be felt today is, is the road network that leads to Cumberland House. In only five years, Weyerhaeuser has exceeded their 20-year road building limit by 70 percent. So that's why this area is in trouble today mm -hmm. with, with, the, with the most population. Harvesting in the summer, when the ground is soft and wet, 
leads to compaction and rutting of soils, harming the ability of the forest to regenerate itself. Weyerhaeuser has exceeded its legal summer logging allowance by 100%. The old logging used to have enough wood to last you till July 15th. Now these guys want to start harvesting June 1st. Well, the frost is just out of the ground. Everything's quite soft. The mill starts running out of wood. There's no way that they'll let the mill run out of wood because it's way too expensive. So you get end up going into your high areas, or this is called a summer area. It's still really soft. So they've cut an in-block road here, and they're forced to gravel it because to try and get the wood out. When I logged up north for Weyerhaeuser, and we, we did in-block roads, like summer roads, and then if it rained heavily and the mill was short of wood, all of a sudden we started making ditches. You put big heavy ditches in and they haul tons and tons and tons of gravel. So all of a sudden, <coughs> an ordinary in-block road through small blocks is a major highway. And it's happened dozens of places. Almost all of Weyerhaeuser's logging in the boreal forest leaves behind barren clear cuts. Well, it's poor logging practice. Like, uh, you can see this whole cut block, a large, large portion of it was large diameter spruce. So there should have been at least one big island of large diameter spruce to represent this area that was originally here. And as you can see, it's all been cut down. When you clear cut an area, you move a lot of animals. Yeah. It's not only the most, also. Yeah. The fur bearing animals and, the, and also you're affecting the water systems that are in place. It is Weyerhaeuser's core policy that employees at all levels will work to ensure that we comply with applicable environmental laws, regulations, and other requirements to which the company commits. And just in time delivery, uh, when their volumes are so low that the mill's on the verge of a shutdown, all of a sudden the rules and the regulations go by the wayside. Despite Weyerhaeuser's law breaking, the Canadian Standards Association continues to certify the company's operations as sustainable. Part of the CSA rules are that you, you don't, uh, uh, it's not done in the dark, it's public involvement. So we say, okay, now they've got their CEDA certification. Where the hell have these guys been? I saw one guy in PA at a meeting one time, a joint FPAC meeting. I've never seen a guy here, anybody, and yet they've received their certification. Weyerhaeuser's chronic disregard for the ecosystems and communities in which they operate is shocking. In Saskatchewan's delicate boreal forest, Weyerhaeuser has once again exposed itself as an untrustworthy company that engages in socially and ecologically destructive practices. The forest, the wildlife, and its peoples deserve better.